Previously on Hardliners, Skipper Chug lost an anchor. And the plot. The anchor's over there, not over here. Paul lost a deckhand. I hope they don't lock him up for a week. I need him. And Tony almost lost a finger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this time on Hardliners, as the season closes for our three longline skippers. Shooting away, can't be any happier. The race is on to finish on a high. Come on, fellas. Get that fish on the boat. Crisis on the Santo Rocco as a crewman is knocked out. Oh, oh shit. Someone get right. Oh. Paul's anger at his sloppy deckhands. That makes my blood boil. And Tony takes a risk on a huge shark. What kind of shark you got? Mako. Three of the seat. I'll stop looking at it. Let's get it on. This is longline fishing. One of the toughest jobs in Australia. Wakey, wakey. Jade. Come on, boys. It's coming to the end of a long, hard season for the East Coast tuna fleet. Time to shoot away. The weary crew of the South Seas are dead on their feet as they haul themselves out of bed at midnight. We're on them. The round-the-clock grind takes its toll as deckhand Gordo drops bait fish on the deck. That's f***ing rough. That makes my bo blood boil. Seen that shit. Owner skipper Paul Lavalley has seen enough. He orders the line in the water. All right, let's do it, eh? Shredder, got to get some light sticks going. Going over it. That's no good like that. What the f*** is going on here? Paul wants to end the season on a high. The crew just want the pain to end. Stay in focus, here's a problem. You get tired and fatigued. That's when you do get problems. And there'll be no let up for the crew until sunrise tomorrow. 30 kilometres to the south, dawn breaks over the big boat, the Senna Rocco. Skipper Chuck Lagana has a first timer on board. Another new boy on the boat. Uh, he hasn't been fishing before, but he's pretty keen. Uh, you only give him a go and see how we go. New boy Taz has left behind a girlfriend and a baby daughter, hoping to pass the chug test to land a job. This is my first day, first time I've ever done anything like this, first time long lining. Taz has been working in a boat shop for the past three years. Sick of being stuck inside selling things, so I thought it was time to get out and about. What better way to do that than get on the water, I reckon. In the wheelhouse, Chuck keeps an eye on his new boy. Taking on a green deckhand is risky. His mistakes can cost everyone money. It'll take me a few days. You can't expect someone just to come out and be a champion. So far, he's going all right. He hasn't ended up over the side yet. Five hours later, the grind comes to an end. So far, Taz hasn't earned a cent. That comes if they land tuna tonight. Yeah, put the brew on! Looking forward to going in and relaxing inside, so should be good. Get some lunch in me. If I can keep it down, we might wage some bets and see how we go. Put some money on it, see if I can keep it down or not. As it's only day one at sea, Taz backs an old favourite. Staying away from that raw fish, that's what I'm doing. I don't dig it. I've only made piling. <laughs> Compliments of the chef. Further north, and the mood on the South Seas is still tense the next day. Come on. Come on the other side of the main line. Does anyone uh, speak English? But a run of quality tuna starts to lift the spirits. We've got a nice yellow fin. Beautiful. He doesn't want anything to do with us, but he doesn't have a say in the matter. What a model. Oh, look at that. Oh, beautiful. Ripper, mate, ripper. Tuna! Got him backed up there. Can't keep up. That's what it's all about. Filling your tanks up with fish. 30 fish and a packed tank. Everyone should be happy. But the way the deckhands treat the prize tuna angers Paul. They're not even going into the tank. Don't do that, Gordo. And careless Gordo is again in the firing line. Grip the meat, mate. 
The deckhand yeah, walks off, off right. and Paul is livid. Just jump on him. Jump on him? Yeah. Look our prices up a bit more. I've got the shits for one of me crew. I've got off an attitude. Once I can jump on fish, piss me off. Not out here to lose money. The boss is on the warpath, and his sights are firmly set on the deckhands. So that's probably the hardest side of my business. That wears you out, trip by trip. It's a battle. 30 kilometres south, the Santa Rocco winches in its line. Yeah. So far, it's been a mixed season for Chug and his crew. We're off the scar, got the first tuna. Taking us about an hour to winch 50 hooks. Anyway, let's see what the other 1,950 have on them. But when the tuna come, new boy Taz is kept well away from the action. Mike, can you get a gaff, mate? That guy can't gaff yet. All right, gay. An hour later, Taz gets a chance to prove himself on a feisty yellowfin. Give it a good hit. Pull it straight up. Put the gaff over his head. Pull it straight up hard. Go, okay, grab it. Pull it hard. Yeah, that's it, sort of. Deckhands must learn how to safely swing a gaff. In the wrong hands, a novice can slice open a leg by mistake. He can also damage the tuna, which costs everyone money. Just trying to pull it up, feel like you're going to end up in the drink. Now the boys have got my back, they'll grab me and pull me up. It tears the greenhorn. He reckons it's a bit rough. Jeez, he's going to shit himself when he sees rough weather. Might have to strap him to the boat. Not what I expected, I don't think. I mean, I knew it'd be tough. I didn't think it'd be this tough. It's part of life. you got to work hard. As the dancing deckhand performs a tuna two-step, Partners haul in more fish. That's how you want them. But by two in the morning, the Santa Rocco has landed just 20 big tuna. A shell shock Taz has earned just a few dollars for 17 hours of backbreaking work. Thank God the night's over. Oh, mate, I'm going straight to bed. Bug it, mate. I am rooted. Absolutely rooted. Glad it's over. Honestly, oh, I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. I just want to go to bed. I'm knackered. The next morning, 40 kilometres to the south, is the little boat Angelica. Oh, I like the look of this. There's something here. Whoa, some weight here. Rookie skipper Tony Cross may have hit the jackpot. Whatever he's hooked, it's tangled 300 metres of line. Here, here. Bring it around here. Yeah, here we go. Wait, here. Here we, here we go, here we go. Right, we've got the fish here. See it? What kind of shark you got? Mako. Big Mako. Is it dead? Yeah, he's dead. Dead as. Well, we'll have him then. Come on, bring it to the seat. I'll stop looking at it. Let's get it on. This Mako is at least three metres long. Right, Wait, I've got four guys on the deck. I want another one over here. You've got to lower that down. We're lifting the tail, OK, guys? To land the monster shark, the crew try to lasso the tail. I just don't want that gaff to rip out and hit your tone. OK, well, don't. Yeah. Oh, I've lost him, sorry. Oh, yeah, that's a good lasso angle. Come on. What should have been a simple job turns into a major operation. Yeah. Hold it out a bit. Push down on me back, man. Don't, don't hug me. No, I was going to push. Oh, yeah. The five oh, men God. struggle for 20 minutes to secure the shark. Right. As Deck and Dan takes the strain, Tony swings the winch into action. You know, if he was alive, we wouldn't have stuck with him because it's just too big and dangerous. But if he's dead, we'll take him. One of the boys will get a souvenir off the jaws. <laughs> yeah, you got that spare ropes on it still? Yep. Because oh, that's a little strop. Woo! Ah! Hi, big shark. The Mako weighs in at 250 kilos. But for all that effort, it's worth just over $200. Making a pig of himself on one of our tuna he was. That's what he had for lunch. Oh, yeah, my scissors. An hour after the shark and the line tangle, Tony finally lands his first tuna. What do you got, huh? Gaff! 
Yeah, I got my hands full here, fellas. Back on the job. But they're coming up dead, and the quality drops. They've been on the line for too long. Dead, though. That's disappointing. We lost that owl with that shark and the line break. We might have got these fish alive. The line break and wasting time with the shark has cost Tony thousands in quality tuna. Unlucky. So this is day two on the water. We'll be putting out lines again. And I don't feel good. I feel like I've done 12 rounds with Mike Tyson after last night. After just five hours sleep, the Seno Rocco's punch drunk crew are back at work. Last night was a body blow to new boy Taz. It was pretty brutal, to be honest. I feel like I'm, I mess up a little bit, but you know, I guess that can only be expected on your first time out at sea. So hopefully I'll pick it up and make him smile. I think I'm doing all right, I guess. As the boss keeps watch, Taz auditions for a TV show. Do you know why we do this? Because we want to be billionaires so freaking bad. You wouldn't do it for any other reason. Marco. Five hours later, the skipper calls time. And worn-out Taz has only one thing on his mind. I miss my missus. I want to go see her, give her a big cuddle. So I'll be glad to get home. But Chuck has different ideas. They'll be eating, sleeping, and getting up in about five hours. Five hours becomes three as Chuck orders his crew to work. All right, boys. Okie dokie. The hard day's night takes its toll. The tired deckhands aren't on their toes. A big, bring that down there. There's a couple here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, get it. Come on. Two quality big-eyed tuna are tangled, and Chug wants them on board. All right, get the other. Oh, oh shit! Oh, oh. Rutz has been smashed in the head with a wooden gaff. He's knocked out. Hundreds of kilometres from emergency help. Someone get rats. <sighs> All right, get the other one. Oh, 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 shit. On the Seno Rocco, Rutz has been flattened, knocked out by a blow to the head from a gaff. Someone get rats. <sighs> He's not clean here. All right, Rutz, make sure I didn't scoff him. As the crew race to land another tuna, Rutz starts to come to. Dazed and confused, he eventually staggers to his feet. Sorry, Rutz. Sorry, Herb, I didn't mean it. But the crack to the skull is too much. Rutzy, what? Well, so you hit me in the head with the gaff. That hurt. <laughs> it apes. Oh, shit. I thought I killed you. I was going, Craig, someone get Rutzy. 15 minutes later, Rut starts to come out of his haze. On the top of the head. Kapow! Chuggy. These gaffing skills. There's five lines going in the water every direction. Everyone's trying to grab one, so I just went and grabbed the gaff. It's not like I'm a small target. Probably could have seen me if he looked. They get in the way, bad luck. <sighs> Got a nice headache now. It's a lucky escape for Ruts. A serious head wound could mean a helicopter rescue. This is a little gap. But a rather tuna soon eases the pain. Beautiful! Ah. That's what I've been waiting for, mate. And we get to see, got to see Russ get knocked out of the gap too. <laughs> nah, these are the ones we want. Yellowfin, yellowfin! Bring it on. More, more. Fish coming up. Fish, fish, fish. I'll see if I can knock someone else out. 40 kilometres to the south, the fishing gods conspire against the Angelica. It's not like it's cut. It is cut. First, it was a tangle. Then, a shark. Now, it's a line cut. As of now, we're just wasting time. We've got to get to the gear and get it out. While Skipper Tony searches for the next beacon, Deccan Dan finishes the winch up. Totally different controls than what I'm used to. This is totally opposite, so... Twenty minutes later, they retrieve the final beacon, and Dan's shift is over. It's a gear done today. It's a little bit all over the show. Inspired by Tony's rise from deckhand to skipper, Dan has a dream. Hopefully within 12 months, I'm going to be driving one of these things on my own. Yeah, I'll be working on the ocean. Hopefully I'll be a skipper. I'll have Tony's job. 
he'll be driving a better boat and I'll be probably driving this one. He manages his crew well, he maintains the boat well, he puts us on the fish, which is the most important thing. So he keeps, he's keeping everyone happy. <laughs> when it's busy, time flies. Time flies, you're having fun. 70 kilometres north, it looks like a new crew has boarded the South Seas. We just got seven fish in seven hooks. One a hook for the last seven hooks. Fish are just biting their heads off at the moment out here. An amazing run of high quality tuna has washed away the infighting. I can't count this quick. With thousands of dollars coming up, no one's whinging about being tired now. We're awesome, mate. Three in a row, mate. We're pumped. Hey, you want it. No, you want it. Oh, you got it. <laughs> oh, <I'm over> it. <laughs> Even grumpy Gordo's got a smile on his face. Mate doesn't grow on trees, you know, it swims in the ocean. With this much tuna on the line, who needs a gaff? It's still coming on thick, we just gotta stop. 72 fish we've caught today, so far. Still got 300 hooks in the water. And we've just caught about 30 in the last hour and a half. It's a good problem to have. With so many fish, they convert an empty bait tank into an icy home for the yellowfin. It's not over yet. If we can crack 100, we'll be uh, over the moon. That's a staggering century of tuna in a day. Paul's best ever catch. Open it up. Suddenly, the crew don't want the season to end. Don't mind doing a few extra hours when there's a few fish there. 30 kilometres away is the Sano Rocco. Rutz is fighting fit, but now new boy Taz has a headache. This yellow fin could be a good payday if he lands it. Good size, this one. But a thousand dollar tuna gets away because Taz is too slow. Lost him. Lost. Does not care this man. The crew ride the new boy hard. They don't want more cash slipping through his green fingers. Never ever let the line wrap around your hand. Yeah, just the same fingers get taken yeah. straight off. You lose a finger if it you know, starts pulling. I just didn't want the bastard to get away because it's kept on slipping through my hands. A steep learning curve makes it a long night for the crew. A cup of coffee wouldn't go astray. Put the brew on. Plenty of that keeps me awake. I've got to cut back to about 20 cups a day. Yellow fin. Keeps coming, we might be all right. Might get out of here earlier. Get land. But Chug has bad news for a deckhand keen on an early mark and dry land. Another two sets to go. Another two. Another couple of hours. That means the Sano Rocco is on course for a 3 a.m. finish. Nice yellow fin there. We're rich. Rich, I tell you. Yellow fin's money, so that's, that's good. That's what we're here to do, get paid. A monster 19-hour shift comes to an end, and the crew feel the pain. Long night. Very long night. I don't know how these boys do it. I'll take my head off to them. New boy Taz isn't sure if he's made of the right stuff. Definitely something I want to get into, but um, it's going to be constant. It might be a bit much. I don't want to miss out on my daughter growing up because she's a beautiful little girl and, you know, she deserves a dad that's going to be around a bit more. As the weary crew pack up, on board a 43 tuna. In the wheelhouse, Chug and Rutz chill out to the sound of their favourite radio show. Win. Down east, 20 to 30 knots. Two, two, three, Let's keep winching up, boys. I'm just hoping we can crack a hundred for the day. On the South Seas, Skipper Paul and his merry men are edging towards a century of fish. Woo! On one line. It's starting to wear me out. We've got 85 fish today. It's all going. Keep yelling like that for the rest of the night, isn't it? Unbelievable. He's hit a rich patch of high-grade tuna and closes on the catch of a lifetime. I hope that we should get a pay rise. That's what we should get. I should pay me loan off, cos I'm in debt that much. I'll be able to sleep f***ing every now and again. Tuna! As his crew haul away, Paul finally hits the milestone. A hundred! 
Yeah! Oh, it's ecstatic, mate. It's unreal, eh? Good to be making a few dollars. Woo! Pay a few bills. Might even be able to go out for dinner. It's one perfect day for Paul. <laughs> it's about to get better. The surprise waiting for him in port. Not a bad day at the office, eh, boys? The South Sea steams into Sydney, with Skipper Paul's best ever catch safely on ice. It's his crowning moment. The weather's been pretty nasty. Ships are cutting our gear and not catching much fish. It's been a real struggle. To turn around and, and have a good trip like this, you know, you, you feel on top of the world. Dream come true when it's like this. On board is almost $100,000 worth of tuna. Yesterday's tension and tiredness are a distant memory. For the deckhands, it's a staggering $3,500 each for one day's work. It's a hard life and they need to see rewards. They definitely got it on this trip. Paul's reward waits on the wharf. His wife, Graciella, and their two sons drove three hours for a surprise visit. We're excited, aren't we? See, Daddy? Paul only has a couple of days, so it's hard to make it here at the right time when we're not, when we don't have school and he's, you know, in at the right, on the right days. That's all day's fish. Paul and Graciella have risked it all this season. Together, they carry a $1.5 million debt. You see the money coming in and the money going out. You think, far out, this boat needs to perform. The pressure's on to perform all the time. There's so much at stake. A catch this good will go a long way to ease the financial pain. Beautiful sight. Nice track on These quality tuna will be sold in Japan in 24 hours time. Show me the money. He's on such a high, Paul can't wait to get out there and do it again next season. The boys are happy, I'm happy, the bank manager's happy, and at the end of the year, you just look back and say, you know, that's why I do it. I, I love fishing. I, I wouldn't do anything else. An hour later, on the Angelica, Tony unloads his last catch of the season. When I first got the boat, I used to think of the... Yeah, the other skippers as me peers. At the end of the day, they're the competition. They're the opposition. 30.7. Today, locals snap up most of Tony's tuna. This season, it was a slow and shaky start for the rookie skipper. Nine months ago, I couldn't even park the boat. Stressing about everything. And it's taken six months to start enjoying driving. Tony's also won over the deckhands. It's not as much of a gamble to come and come and work because being a green skipper with no catch record, the boys don't know if they're going to make any money. But now that the, the, we're turning over money every month, yeah, yeah, the crew's a bit keener. Right, the tags have got to go in these fish. But no, we've made money. The boss is happy. They haven't taken the boat off me, so it's all good. We're ready for season two. The San Rocco steams out of Sydney one final time. You can't make money alongside the wharf. You've got to be out there. Skipper Chuck offloaded his last catch. And new boy Taz, who didn't make the grade. It's not a job just for anyone. You've got to have the blood for it. And I've seen it, people come and go. What scares them is when they get pushed to work bad weather. At the end of the day, the whole lot of them have just crumbled. Chuck has battled storms and sharks this season. We've worked a lot of bad weather and had a lot of bad days. Had some good days. The fishing's been up and down all year. When the fish have been there, we've been pushing the weather a bit just to try and catch. It's the name of the game is to be out there. But the veteran skipper is a survivor and a legend of the sea. He's respected as one of the best. When you're on the fish and you're getting a lot of fish, it's, it's good. You're just all pumped up. You, know, you just want to keep going all night. And I can't wait. Get out there and smash a few yellowfin. I can't see myself doing any other job but fishing. It's just born fisherman, that's it. Just love it.